Hi, this is Suyash. This is Kat. It is cold. This is Canada. You know, fitness coaches use this phrase to motivate people to work out. They say that the heaviest weight that you will lift in the gym is the front door. Once you're through that front door, the rest of the process is pretty easy. The spousal sponsorship for Canada is like that in no way. Once you're through the front door, each weight actually becomes heavier than the last. And by the time you're done, you have less muscle than you had when you begun. But you get to finish the application and hit that submit button and begin to seek medical assistance. Speaking of assistance, I've been getting a lot of questions about the technical aspects of the online portal. For instance, do I need approval to create the account? Who should create the account, me or my spouse? Do I need to validate the digital forms? And if I do, how will they generate barcodes? How do I write my name in the native language? And the name of my institute is so long that the portal wouldn't allow it. What do I do to fix that? Finally, is the online portal quicker? And what happens after I hit the submit button on the application? All that coming up. So put your technology hats on and let's begin. All right, so the first step is to get to this page, the permanent resident portal sign-in page. I'm going to link it in the description below. If you have an account already, just sign in using your email address and password. If you don't, then you can create an account and then sign in. So when you get to this page, a lot of people actually get confused about what's written here. Once you are approved, provided that you are in Canada at the time, you will also be invited by IRCC to use the portal to become a permanent resident. All right. so. This does not mean that you cannot use that portal unless you become a permanent resident. What this means is that once you create a profile, complete your application and submit it, it's going to go through the same process of completeness check, AOR, eligibility review, medical, biometrics, background check, passport request, and finally confirmation of permanent residence. Once you receive the COPR or confirmation of permanent residence, then you will travel to Canada. Once you're in Canada, you will receive a temporary ID and password in your email, which you can then use to confirm your permanent resident status. And then you can apply for your PR card. So this is what it means. Okay, so don't get confused. If you are new, you're just about to create your profile, just go ahead and get started, submit your application, all right? Okay, so the next common question is, who should create the account, the applicant or the sponsor? So let me give you my example. I am sponsoring my wife who is in India right now. So it's an Outland family class sponsorship. I am doing the application for my wife, so I am the representative. So it just makes sense that I create the account because the email address that I will provide is the email address that IRCC will use to do all future communication, okay? So whether it's AOR or re eligibility review or medical or biometrics, everything is going to be communicated to me. So it only makes sense that I create the account, but it doesn't matter either way. Even the applicant can create the account. As long as you upload all the documents that are required and sign all the forms that are required by both applicant and the sponsor, you should be good. Okay. But it just makes sense that whoever is doing the sponsorship should create the account. It just makes it easier. Okay. So next up is digital forms. So first you get to this page. This is the general info page for the online permanent resident portal. I'm going to link it in the description below. You scroll down. And this is where you get a list of digital forms that you have to fill out. So 0008, generic application form, schedule A, 5669, additional family information, 5406, and supplementary information, 5562. These are the four digital forms which you will actually have to fill out on the portal, which means you will have to type in the information on the portal. You don't have to download PDF versions of these forms, fill them out, and then upload them, okay? You have to actually fill them out on the portal. Once you are done with these forms, they do not generate barcodes. You don't have to print them out to sign them. The way you sign these ones is by typing in your name towards the end of the application or towards the end of each of these forms, depending on whatever the situation may be. All right. And then there are instructions about all the other forms which you need to fill out. So if you're looking to find information on what forms you need to fill out to complete your spousal sponsorship application, I have an entire video about the list of forms which should be showing up on the cards here, also linked in the description below. So check it out. There's another video that I made which explains how to sign these forms, which ones to sign, which ones not to sign. It should also be showing up on the cards here, linked in the description below. So check these two videos out. They are very important for your permanent resident application. 
for spousal sponsorship. All right. Okay, next up is how to write your names in the native language. So the first step is to log into your application. Scroll down all the way until you get to the form section. All right. So what we are going to do is we look at one such form, then you can apply the same concept to all the other forms that ask for names in native language. So let's look at form 5669 schedule A. As you can see, it has a edit or a start button next to it, not an upload button which means it's a digital form. So you'll click on edit or start if you're starting the application for the first time. Then as you scroll down, hit start again. And this is where you will have to type in your name. So the instructions clearly state for this form 5669, enter all names in English and in your native language or script. Now the way you will do this will depend on your operating system and your device. If you're using a MacBook or a Mac, which is an Apple device, then the instructions will be slightly different. If you're using a Windows PC, then the instructions are slightly different and we are going to take a look at both. So right now we'll begin with instructions for Apple devices. If you're using a Windows device, then you can just skip to that section, which is linked in the timestamps. All right. So the way to do this on a Mac is to click on this Apple icon here on the top left, go to system preferences, click on keyboard, then you'll click on input sources and this is where right now it's only two languages selected Canadian English and Hindi because it's my mother tongue so I had pre-selected it but you can click on this plus sign and it gives you an option to select any language that you want so let's say you want to select Dutch all right and then you simply add it so now what happens is when you go back here towards this flag that shows the Canada flag, you will have the options for all these languages. So that's the way you add your language preference. Go to system preferences, add the language, and then click this icon, and it's going to show you all the languages that you've added. So right now, because I have to provide my full name in English first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write my name, last name here, first name here, and then what I can do is next to my last name and first name, I can also write the same name in Hindi, which is my native language. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the keyboard from English to Hindi. And I am going to simply type the same letters on my keyboard in English, but it is going to show up in Hindi. All right. So if I hit one, it's going to simply convert the English text, which I typed on my keyboard into my native script. Okay. And the same thing I can do for my first name. So S U Y A S H. And it converts it into Hindi. All right. So that's one way of listing it. Then below it says you write full name in your native language. So this is where you don't have to write your name in English. Just write the entire name in Hindi. So S U Y A S H G A U T A M. And that's it. That's how you write the name. Now, a lot of you can argue that if they're asking to write the full name in your native script here, why do you need to provide the family name and given name also in your native script? This is completely your choice because they've said write all names in English and in native language just to be safe. I chose this option, but you can choose to skip this if you feel comfortable, but to be safe, why not write the first name and last name separately also in the native language? and then collectively I can just write the full name in my native script. All right. So this is the way you will write these names on a Mac. Let's look at how to do that on a Windows. Okay. So for a Windows PC, what you can do is you can simply go to your control panel, select the region and language settings, then add language, and then you can select the language that you want to add. Because I don't have a Windows PC, I'm not going to be able to demonstrate that, but it's fairly straightforward and very similar to this. But sometimes a Windows PC might not work the way you would want it to work here. For instance, for Mac, if I simply type my name in English, it reflects in Hindi, my native language. That might not work in Windows always. So an alternative step that you can do is simply go to Google and type English to Hindi. All right. Or English to your native language you will have an option to select whatever language you want to convert it into. All right. Now, this is not always perfect, but you may have to play around with these names a little bit to get the right name. So let's say we are working with English to Hindi and I'm just going to type in my name S U Y A S H 
and it brings the name in Hindi with like a colon next to the share, which we don't really need, but we can delete that in the edit. So you're just gonna click on these two double boxes. It will copy it, come back to your form and simply paste that under the box. And then you can remove the colon. So now you have Sayesh. And then you can simply type the name in English as well. All right, so that's one way of doing it. Let's say your name is Anurag. So A-N-U-R-A-G. And it converts it into a Hindi name. So again, click on the double box, come back here and just paste it. And it's going to list the name in your native language. All right, so this might take a little bit of experimentation on your part because it adds a bunch of punctuation sometimes. So just play with the names and you will be able to figure it out. So if I were to type Ashwarya, I still get something that is fairly close to Ashwarya, you know, so just play around with these spellings to get the exact name right here. Let's try one more. Let's try a longer name, Ram Shankar. All right. So it's pretty spot on except for the colon, which you can always remove on the edit. And the same thing you can do in other languages also. So let's say you're Russian. So if I were to type my name in English and I were to switch the language from Hindi to Russian, it is going to translate it like that. All right. Now I don't know Russian, but it seems like this is pretty close to the actual translation. So there's a bunch of languages here to choose from. Choose whatever language you have, whatever native language you have, and then simply copy it and bring it over here and paste it. That's one way to do it. Otherwise, just go to your control panel and follow the instructions that I just told you. Okay, one more thing I want to explain before we move on to the next section. The length of these fields is limited, all right? So as far as names are concerned, I don't think you should run into any problems. Let me show you. So let's say if I keep typing in letters until it stops me. So as you can see, the characters allowed, maximum characters allowed are 57. All right, for this field, 57 for this field. And if I just paste it here, it's actually allowing even more characters. So when it turns red, that means you've actually exceeded the limit and you should restrain yourself within that limit. All right, so the full name actually allows 90 characters. The family name and given name allow 57 characters each. So you have plenty of space to type in your given name and family name in English and in your native script and your full name in your native script. All right, so don't worry about this space issue in this section. All right. Okay, so let's look at this character length issue further. So for the same form schedule A, if you go to section C education, this is where you have to provide information about your university. All right. And all of these boxes also have character limits. So let me type some gibberish here to understand what the limit is. And I'm just going to copy and paste it into all these boxes. So they are going to tell us what the maximum characters allowed in those boxes are. So as you can see in date, it's obvious only seven characters are allowed and this is a no brainer. So just type your date in the format listed by 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 and MM. So let's say it's 2006 June and that will fix the issue. All right. As far as the name of the institution is concerned, only 24 characters are allowed. So let's say my university is National Institute of Technology Allahabad. All right. So if I try to list that here, National Institute of Technology, I've already exceeded the limit. And that is where a lot of people have problems. So what you can do is you can simply list abbreviations, you know, NIT. And when you list city and country here, the immigration officer is going to be able to verify that. And you're also going to attach proof of education as supporting documents for them to verify that this is in fact the university. So the abbreviation here is not going to be a problem. That is my opinion because there is no other logical explanation as to how you can provide the entire name of the university. All right. So that is one way you can do it. And if you're really particular about uh, verification and accuracy, then what you can do is you can actually look up your university name on Google and there must be an abbreviation form. I know for a fact that there are about 30, 31 NITs in India and all of them are actually listed under the Wikipedia page as NIT and then the name of the city. So it shouldn't be a problem, but even if your university doesn't have an abbreviation, 
you're okay to provide abbreviation here as long as you're attaching proof of education in your supporting documents all right same goes for type of certificate or diploma issued so let's say you did an mba all right so if you try to type in masters of business administration it's going to give you an error all right so i couldn't even go beyond business so the best option is to list abbreviation mba ms it etc all right and same thing goes for field of study. So be mindful of the number of characters, but don't get too caught up on providing the exact information here because it's not going to apply for a lot of cases. All right, so the next most commonly asked question is, how do I prepare photos for upload? How do I label them? And how do I compress them? Should I combine or should I upload individually? So you're gonna scroll down all the way here and there is a photo section this is where you can upload your photos now i've made a complete video on how to prepare your photos from getting your photos to labeling them to providing context to compressing them to making sure the quality is right and then finally uploading them so that video should be showing up on the cards here it's linked in the description below check out that video if you want to know how to label and prepare your photos for upload all right all right so the next most commonly asked question is what happens after i submit my application once you've uploaded all the forms, signed all the forms that require signature and filled all the digital forms, typed in your name as the electronic signature, you can hit the submit button. And once you do that, your application is going to show you a status like this. All right. With the program category date submitted and the status as submitted. All right. And the view option next to the submitted status is going to be disabled. So once you hit the submit button, you may or may not receive a notification like this. This email confirms that you have successfully submitted your permanent residence application. We'll review it to make sure you provided all the information was complete, you uploaded all required documents, and you paid the fees. We'll send you a confirmation email, AOR, once an agent has confirmed that the application is complete. So now the application is going to go through a number of phases. An agent will check for its completeness. If it is complete, then they are going to check for eligibility of the applicant and the sponsor. If that is complete also and accurate, then they might move the application forward for the biometrics or medical request, after which there will be a background check, after which you will receive a passport request, and then finally your confirmation of permanent residence. All right. So for the online portal, once you submit your application, it is taking an average of two to three months to receive the acknowledgement of receipt. Now, this number is not definitive by any standards. It can vary from candidate to candidate, but a rough ballpark average number would be two to three months after submission to receive your acknowledgement of receipt. And I'm going to be making videos about each step as I receive status updates from IRCC, all right? So those were some frequently asked questions about the permanent resident online portal. I know I could not cover every possible scenario, so keep those comments flowing in. And once I have a big enough list, I will make another one. That's been it for this video. I hope you found some value in it. I will see you in the next one. Until then, remember, the key to success is not just hard work, perseverance, faith and patience. It's also print, sign, scan and upload. Good night. Where do we go from? Tell me, tell me.